find out how easy it really is to magnetize the Knight Armager. Spiky bits. Welcome back Hobby Maniacs, I'm Rob Bear and today we have a very quick and easy guide on how to magnetize the Knight Armager for you so you can future proof uh, your new little guy against future FAQs, additions, and errata. So the new baby knight, or armager, as everybody seems to affectionately call this little guy, has uh, taken the hobby world by storm. This uh, this cool little kit, it's only available currently in the Forge Bane box, but I'm sure at some point when we see the new knight codex release, we'll get a separate release for this bad boy, I hope. Maybe there'll be extra weapons that can go on this in the sprue. Perhaps Forge World will come out with upgrade parts once we see the Fires of Cerax, I think it's called, uh, Imperial Armor Book that's been rumored for two years. We know traditionally they come out with a release of an Imperial Armor Book around the end of summer-ish, and technically they did last year too with all the Imperial Armor Books that contained 8th edition rules for all those great units we had. But rewind to today, we're trying to future-proof our knight armager so that we can upgrade them or perhaps switch out the weapons depending on what uh, future errata or faqs or who, who knows what might happen or you just see a cool 3d printed upgrade part over on shapeways that you want for your particular knight you want a wolf knight hey they got you covered you want admech knight you want pincer grabber claws out of aliens movie hey they got you covered over there already as well so lots of possibilities out there and it seems like in eighth edition it definitely pays to magnetize and make all of your models as uh, modular as possible or the long run let's be honest so let's jump right into it i'm not going to keep you y'all know uh, magnetizing is probably a good idea but we show you just how easy it is on this particular model So when it comes to magnetizing this bad boy, the first thing you want to do is get some pre-assemblies done up for your knight. So first off, you're just going to want to assemble the torso here just like this. Don't glue in your arms. You're going to need to do a little bit more work on here, but it's important to make sure that they are clear and can be removed just like that. Then get all your weapon assemblies uh, trimmed up and ready to go. You're going to want both halves of a super melta. You're also going to want uh, the chainsaw, but leave off the weapon supports right here. You're going to need those. We're going to have to magnetize those in a second. And you can put, you know, all the carapace weapons together. Oop, those are double. Now you don't have to. <laughs> and all of the armor plates. I just kept those off because we are going to paint the carriage itself or the car or the uh, robot parts separately so that's going to be all metallic whereas some of the armor plating in the top uh, half here is going to be a different color you're also going to want to assemble your legs now here we have some 3d upgrade parts which really isn't going to be part of this tutorial but i had already glued the legs down here because that's going to be part of the metal color so it's just going to look a little weird but just so you know that's what those are Working from the ground up, we're going to magnetize the torso here. And you can see where the little nub comes up into the torso area. So what we're going to do to get an accurate measurement of where to put our magnet is lock this down flush so that it's all flush, the feet against the ground and the top torso squarely flush against the bottom here. And we're just going to go in here with a Sharpie and just kind of make some marks just to get an idea of where to cut this thing or to plane across on this little nub. So now we kind of have a depth to get in there and figure out where to cut. And there's two different ways to do this. We can just literally get in here with our clippers, but there's probably a chance that we'll slip a little bit right there. So what I'm actually gonna do is take my X-Acto blade and score this a bit just so I have a little bit of something to grip onto 
with my clippers there. So I'm gonna make sure we're going parallel to the hip right there. And I'm just gonna kind of score it. You can see a chunks already started to come off. So that's gonna give us a nice little spot to grab again. Just going in here with my clippers, putting equal force onto it, but pushing and making sure that we're square with the hips right there and cutting through. And that's going to remove a decent amount of material for us to get started with. Then we're probably just going to have to work at it a little bit with uh, the knife just to get squared off a little bit more or conversely if you have one we could do the army painter bone saw which probably isn't a bad idea to start with however you want to be careful that you are planing it correctly and this actually cuts not by pressing down but by the friction of the teeth going back and forth. So I'm only lightly, very lightly putting pressure on this and it's cutting through this plastic like butter. Now I don't recommend using it for metal or anything like that or any resins, but as you can see, it's not gonna take very long to cut through. And when you're done, you'll get that nice even plane right there. Now I'm not saying that you gotta run out and grab a bone saw from Army Painter and order make this work it's just a little bit easier you can hack at it with your exacto blade and your clippers just be super careful that you don't stab yourself because it's very easy to do at this point now you'll see here because of the way this is molded we are going to have a little pilot hole kind of pre-drilled for us here for our magnet today we'll be using a quarter inch by one sixteenth uh, deep magnet so that's a uh, quarter inch is about seven millimeters in the metric scale don't know what that is at the 116. I guess it would be about three mil, oh, way, way less than three. I have to look that one up. Don't know it off the top of my head. I wish the American system is easy to convert as. It is. So I'm actually gonna grab uh, my power driver right here and lock in. And just since I have a pilot hole, very very slow. The slowest speed. And we're on speed one for drill so we don't have any issues there and just very slowly holding this firmly in my hand drill this out once you have carefully drilled out a hole for your magnet you're gonna notice that there's a rather large cavity <laughs> inside the bottom of this knife. Not to fret though, because we're not going to try gluing down a magnet without something to stick it to, because that's just silly. <laughs> so we're going to grab just a random piece of sprue here from the armature kit itself. I've already taken the liberty of planing off the top right there. I like cutting these support structures right by one of the ejection studs. That way, we can use that as a base to set inside of the cavity and kind of approximate where we think the magnet's gonna sit based on, you know, kind of eyeballing it and things like that. I think it's probably about a half an inch or so. And we're gonna leave a little bit of a magnet sticking out of uh, the top right there and probably have to trim that down as well to set in there. But the more surface area to contact the bottom to give that magnet support, even though it will be getting support from the glue around the lip right here, is better. And if you're good eyeballing the depth, you'll get something like this, where you can insert your subsection into here and get even more better of an idea of where to cut this thing. So I know I'm gonna to wanna to go just a little bit below that Sharpie mark now to get a more precise mark. After you get your cut done, you just want to glue your support to a magnet there. You can almost see the dark spot where I cut to. That was the sharpie line. So just do that sharpie line right there. Now, obviously, we're only going to use that bottom magnet. Now it's time to dry fit. So we're going to put this inside here and make sure that uh, everything fits. And it looks like it's hitting the bottom mostly square 
That looks to be pretty good. And it's just sticking out a little bit over the top right there. So I'm pretty pleased with that. So we're gonna glue it down and then pull the stack of magnets back so it's just revealing what my thumbnail is pointing to. And once you have it inserted, it is good to go. And it's just sticking out, just crowning, so to speak, that little pump right there. Now you've probably already guessed the very next step. And that is that it should fit about flush over that support right there. Remember, that's why we made that Sharpie mark in the first place. So now we're just gonna grab a 3 8 inch magnet and cover that hole right there with one of these. Once you get that glued down in there, you should be good to go for the hip joint and we can move on to the weapon systems themselves. Now, a little bit of a word of wisdom here is because that isn't locked in anything, we don't have any support structure. I'm gonna take a little bit of my Vallejo plastic putty here and we're gonna squeeze out what I'm gonna call an O-ring around this right here. And what this is gonna do is once it hardens, it has real stone or marble or some sort of rock or something in here. What it's gonna do is create an additional support system around this so that you know there's less chance of that magnet actually separating because the glue doesn't hold or you just hit a weird angle or something like that. You don't really have to wait for the plastic putty to dry so we're going to be off to the weapon system so the arms are next you're just going to want to unsock it one of your arms right here and either using your bone saw or your clippers you're going to want to shear this down this part this inside piece and this support piece right here we're do going to want to get rid of all of that just like that and that was actually with the clippers so we're going to come back and clean it up a little bit with our exacto blade should never cut like this by the way <laughs> towards your thumb. This is actually a hugely terrible idea because at any time I can slip, cut the crap out of my thumb. So don't be a stupid, do as I say, not as I do. Too late for me. But once you get that surface all planed out, it's time to grab our smaller pin vise and drill a pile hole. Now, in the scheme of things, do you need to draw or to drill a pile hole? No, nah, probably not. But I have found that it allows for better control, especially when you're using power tools. So I, that one, actually not in the center. So I found that at least for my uses, I get a way better accurate drill if. I kind of nailed that pilot hole. So again, we're going to use the same magnet, the same quarter inch magnet. So the same drill that we already have preset up, same low power setting, very slowly cut into this with the drill till we either think you get to about the depth you need or dry fit it a couple times. So take it slow, dry fit twice, drill once and eventually you will have your depth correct where you can fit one of our existing magnets that we already used in here and be good to go so now i'm just going to add a little glue and lock this bad boy down now remember the tricks to getting your magnets to glue in is use the stack system like we're doing here and when you can successfully spin the stack chances are that your magnet has gripped enough safely removed that. now that we've got our two weapon arms magnetized it's time to get our weapons all done up now i'm going to actually do a little bit more off camera than what you're going to see here but <laughs> because I have all these 3D upgrade parts, but this, this step actually couldn't be simpler because strangely enough, 
either by con coincidence or I don't know by design Forge World or GW rather and Forge World's been doing it too on the res has left us a space to actually put the magnet in the weapons right here so where those pieces were that we cut off that would go in here and rotate those are actually a quarter inch big so we're just going to take our stack of magnets and socket one in there and this will literally close around it so before i glue the rest of the weapon or the other half of the weapon onto this i glued in my magnet right here checking my polarities to make sure we're good to go we are and then our quarter inch magnet will clear the second half so i'm going to get my glue back out bad boy together now i've probably got a good idea of where we're going with this but we're about to switch it up so this locks right in to our arm good to go now we've got our close combat weapon arm, which is going to be a problem because, check it out, the blade, this actually locks in to our blade. But if we want to switch out, if they ever come out with any other close combat weapons, well that's going to be an issue because if we this in, these two little sockets are going to restrict us. So we need to insert a magnet into here and a magnet into here and make this removable so that we can enjoy perhaps future GW plastic parts or perhaps some 3D red or 3D printed upgrades. So using the skills we already learned with those quarter inch magnets, we're gonna grab up a stack of 1 8 by 1 16th magnets and just do the same thing right here and drill it in socket it will have room you won't have to build any support structure or anything like that it's actually pretty easy to do and then as far as your support arm we're just going to drill that onto there we can't unfortunately add any plastic putty to the structure here because that will restrict how it locks in but just like we showed you right there and clip off that other nub right there but now it's going to be able to easily interface and still keep that wire and have the range of movement that we are going to want on our armature. So that's it. That is literally all you need to do to magnetize your Knight Armager. Now I went ahead and took the liberty of finishing the rest of the kit and adding some of those 3D upgrade parts that we talked about. Use a little blue tack because I'm going to paint these separate. These are going to be Space Wolf colors. This head pops off. Uh, there's shin plates right here and then we already showed you some of the hip plates. And then these actually just slot in, plug and play. The tolerances are good to go so you don't have to worry about really doing anything with the top uh, carapace weapons there. And this we went ahead and drilled out our 3D chainsaw thingamabobber right here. So this will actually swap out on the fly uh, with this one. So while yours might not look exactly like this, just continue following the rest of the instructions on, you know, how to assemble your head and everything like that and uh, get it up to par. And you can leave the pieces off to paint separately or, you know, just glue them on and be like, well, whatever. Get, get it on the tabletop and get you to a plan. So who knows what's in the future? For the night armager there could be a lot more upgrade uh, parts and kits out there but at least this way with future faqs and chapter approves and erratas your night armager is magnetized and you can do that cool little robo uh, robotech or robocop strut as he saunters across the battlefield murder shuffling whatever little things he comes across right there so that is about it for this one it was relatively simple once we got our thinking caps on and figured out where exactly to put all those magnets and gw left us a couple of spaces and that was that was very nice of them to do so thanks gw another great kit down and more ways to keep it modular and work out our hobby muscles at the same time so if you like these kind of feature tutorials here on this channel make sure you hit that subscribe button turn on notifications by clicking on the bell icon so you can be the very first to like and comment on all our future videos.
deleted scenes, bonus content, and all the interviews and post-game wrap-up videos can be located in the Hall of Veterans on thelongward.net. Visit thelongward.net today and try a week completely free with no strings attached. That's not all. Thelongward.net is also your hobby resource for exclusive early access with an ad-free experience to all your favorite videos. Members of the Hall of Veterans gain early exclusive access to multiple hobby videos. 